Well, a story of hope for you tonight in a place that you might least expect it. Yep, inside the state prison, a little-known program bringing together the victims of violent crimes and the inmates who committed those crimes. Brian Malahi joins us now live from the prison with a story you'll only see here on 2 News at 10. And Brian, there are victims who actually want to do this? Remarkably, there are, Shauna and Mark. The Department of Corrections tells me there have been only 26 such sessions in the last 10 years, and only conversations surrounding cases of murder, attempted murder, sex crimes. Victims must initiate these dialogues. Inmates must agree before the meetings happen behind the prison wall. Dear Alex, I'm writing this letter to take responsibility and accountability for the abusiveness I put you through. Words from inside the prison. I mentally abused you. Unlocked in a letter. When the mental abuse was not working for me, I would have physically abused you. Written by an inmate, one of thousands incarcerated, to 25-year-old Alex Yevgeny Smith. The sexual abuse I forced you to endure was for my own selfishness and to feed my deviant behaviors. At the prison, Alex was given the letter in a face-to-face -face meeting with the inmate, a man who had adopted Alex and abused him when he was a boy. That inmate has now spent years here at the state prison for sex crimes. He agreed to an interview, but out of concerns for his safety, the Department of Corrections did not allow any images of him. I sexually assaulted uh, three of the children that we had adopted. Why did you do it? At the time of my life, I was very angry with a lot of things, uh, a lot of things in my past. Alex has been on anger's receiving end. Born in Russia, he says he can remember physical abuse at an orphanage. The first Utah couple who adopted him gave him up. Adopted again, he was physically and sexually abused by the adoptive dad, now inmate. Growing up, Alex played soccer, went fishing, traveled to Disneyland. He smiled in photos, but home was not the happiest place on earth. And he says the abuse only ended when at 13, he reported his adoptive father to police. I'm still amazed sometimes that somebody actually wants to meet with the offender based on um, what the crime was and how devastating it was. Doug Fawson is in charge of the Victim Offender Dialogue Program. Were you there for the meeting between Alex and his abuser? I was. They were both nervous, especially the, the offender in this case. More than a decade after the assaults against Alex, a door opened to an emotional prison meeting between the boy victim turned adult and his perpetrator. So he looked you in the eye and he told you what? I'm sorry for everything that I've done. He didn't deserve a bit of that. I did it for selfish reasons. And I hope that you can forgive me. Yeah, I wanted him to know that I was very proud of him for making the right choice of him being able to be more of a man at the time of being 13 years old than I was at the age I was at the time of abusing them. And you told him? And I said, I forgave you a long time ago. It was, says Alex, and how much hurt and pain I have forced upon you in your life. A breakthrough session. How did the meeting end? I gave him a hug. That was awesome. One of the coolest things. And just being able to you know, say I love you a lot and you know I don't hold anything against you I never will it was a very spiritual experience I had felt that when I had walked out in a way that I was doing what the Savior would have done Alex says as Christ forgives so must he you may wonder what happened to Alex after his adoptive father went to the prison well he was adopted for a third time. His parents, Rick and Elizabeth Smith. Rick was guardian ad litem, the attorney appointed to represent Alex's interest as a teen. Rick is now a juvenile court judge, and Alex is his son.
Mark Shana, back to you. Amazing story, Brian. And there's probably some that, that don't want to go back and revisit that, do you think? That's right. This is not for everybody. The Department of Corrections is very clear about that. It's rare. And there are cases in which uh, they start down the road of arranging one of these meetings. They have a number of meetings beforehand to try to set some ground rules, and it just develops within those sessions that, you know what, getting victim and offender together again is not such a good idea. But it sounds like when it works, it provides an immense amount of closure for the victim. It sure did for this family, yeah. and it also did for the inmate. All right, Brian, excellent story. Thanks so much. All right.